I'm looking for their strategy side because, you know, they're the ones that made Master of Orion and then, you know, that Birth of the Federation game. Uh, I'm hoping, hoping for a sequel to Birth of the Federation, which actually, now that you, I, I, I mentioned it, I want to add into this podcast, into this episode that I, when I did reach out to this person, I think it was um, uh, Bill Steely, he didn't mention that Birth of the Federation 2 was gonna was being made by Microprose. Uh, however, uh, Civilization 3, uh, it was supposed to be built on the Civilization 3 engine. And because apparently Civilization 3 did ho- so horrible in sales, they canceled Birth of the Federation 2. So I'm hoping maybe get another try at this, you know. I can't imagine what the licensing cost would would be for a, for a Federation for a Star Trek game in today's world with like that new Star Trek series being pretty popular. I don't, you know. Uh, it, I suspect that the way things are going to go is we'll, we'll first need to see, and Micropost will need to sell these games. I mean, the first thing that needs to happen is this publisher needs to see they have to get a temperature gauge for are people responding well to their to them as a publisher. And obviously that's going to depend a lot on how like how we're praising these games, at least two of them. And um, I just don't know enough. I apologize, but I just don't know enough about Second Front, the Steel Panthers-like game. Um, but yeah, we'll, we'll have to see how they are. are. Are they good quality? I mean, this is THG's earlier point, Matt's point, that, you know, is this just a, a name, a sticker on the box that hopefully increases sales? Or does it really have the huge legacy, the huge expectations that come with the Micropose title. Yeah, who knows? I mean, I think it's interesting that, you know, obviously to some extent, if depend I think it depends on how much they're putting into these games, right? Like they they are the publisher of, of three games that are developed by three independent studios. If they are funding those studios to some extent, then how well they sell matters a lot less or a lot more than if they're not really funding them and they're just marketing them, right? Because it's it's cheap ish to market, and if the game doesn't sell, all you need to do is recoup your your thirty percent or forty percent or whatever you take from the game developer. You know that's a lot easier than if you're actively participating in the development. But um, as far as you're right, I mean, I, a lot depends on how we these sell, and I don't I don't know if I have a good sense of how big these markets are. You know, I I don't think Steel Division Two was very successful based off of. I don't know, uh, anecdotal evidence around like around Eugen well, systems. Steel Division, sorry, Steel Division is quite different than um, Steel Panthers. Um, no, Steel no, Panthers it is. Just- so what I'm saying, though, is Steel Division 2 is a game that came out recently. Um, had a lot of hype, a lot of expectation around it. Modern, oh, modern graphical you know, quality, things like that. Um, real-time strategy type game. Um, I don't think it sold very well. I don't know what the market is for these kind of games, right? Like, it, to your point, it's not a flight sim. There's a very defined uh, market around flight sims that can obviously support DCS and IL-2. I don't know what high production quality games like this, they definitely look like they're high production quality. I don't know how much that costs. I don't know how many units they have to sell. I don't know what their expectations are, right? Like, the only... You know, and and we can we can wrap shortly because I know we're getting a little bit long in the tooth. But the only real there's there's two major players in in, in the strategy uh, game space. There's Matrix Games, which and I'm not mean, meaning this as an insult, but does not make games that look like this. And there is Hearts of Iron, which makes a very or not Hearts of Iron, God Paradox, which makes a very defined sort of a, a gaming experience. There are other game developers out there. There are independent games. There's the Ultimate General series, which I think does very well for itself. But there's not really a ton of games out there like this. Like There's some independent games like Victory at Sea, which I don't imagine did very well and wasn't a very good game. But like, I don't know. You know what? How well are they going to do? I hope they do great. But we haven't seen a ton of games that look like this in a while. I think Cold Water is perhaps being the exception. Um... And I don't know, you know, I think it sold well. I think it did well. But I also find it interesting that the, the developer split in two and went in two different directions. Maybe it was just creative differences. I don't know. But I suspect so, by the way, because it looks like the development side of things mostly went one way. And then the I this is actually 
like not based on anything. This is just internet hearsay, basically. But um, the the like the head, what would he be? The like program director type person. He went. He split off. Uh, well, I don't know who split off from who, but he went with some of the assets to this other thing, and he probably got a new development team for that. That's why what I suspect happened. Let me end my rant with saying that I'm very excited with two of these games, and I definitely am intrigued by the uh, second front game. Um, and we do got to come back to second front because they have made their one of the products from this from this person. I guess it's one person in particular. Is he has he has released a toolbox app for making your own hex hex games. So that's interesting oh. by itself. Oh, wow. interesting. Is that like mm-hmm. Mario Maker for war games? <gasps> <laughs> yeah, essentially, yes, actually. Um, it's actually included in the scenario editor. If you've seen the trailer for Second Front, you'll see the scenario editor is in that trailer. And that's, as far as I can tell, it's just based on something, I think it's called Hex Game, or what the heck was it called? I forget what it was called, but um, yeah, he has a standalone tool, which is for developing your own Hex Game. Well, Jean, so. you're going to have to make your own uh, Civil War Generals 2 sequel. Yeah, boy, I mean, yeah, <laughs> you know that's gonna happen. <laughs> um, but yeah, I mean, I, I'm I'm very excited about this. I but I also am trying to temper my excitement because you know we just don't know, and they have to sell well to you know if it, if it doesn't sell if if, the, if none of these games sell well, then presumably you know we may not see much more from them. Um, but I, I'm, I would hope that, that sea power in the modern missile age goes well because there's a pretty defined customer base around the cold waters games, um, and or the cold, cold waters itself and then Atlantic fleet. So I think they know what they're doing, even if it's a slightly different group. Um, task force Admiral looks brilliant. I want to see, I want to see more games like that. Um, I want to, this is what I want to see the future of war gaming uh, B. I don't want everything. I love Gary Grigsby, and I love a lot of Matrix games, but I would like to see more war games look like this, and I hope that this is maybe the start of something that can give us more of that because I'm tired of seeing playing games that look like they're out of 1995. There's no reason that we shouldn't be able to to have newer, better-looking games that push the envelope, that make people who aren't war gamers think, that looks cool. I want to play that, right? There's a time and a place for Gary Grigsby games. I want War in the Pacific 2. I would pay $400 for War in the Pacific 2, and I know everything that that entails. But that shouldn't be, you know, we shouldn't have that be our only war gaming experience. And there's a wealth of games out there, but I just, I'm not sure how many of them are good. Right, like I would like to see this be the start of something where we can bring good-looking war games back into the quasi-mainstream and interest people who, when they look at the game, they don't think, eh, like they think that looks cool. I want to play that. We need gateway war games that draw people in. So say we all. <laughs> Love that. That's perfect. I'm the historical gamer, and I approved this message. 2020. <laughs> THG 2020. War games for all. I mean, I'm looking forward to it. Well, let, let's continue to look forward to it. Let's see how it goes. Well, with that being said, I think we're probably about time to wrap up. Oh, yeah, I think so. <laughs>